Well, hello, this is Stefan again. And uh, we look at uh, active filters in this video. Before we did discuss these passive filters, and uh, we've been playing around with RC filters uh, cascaded. And we found out that cascading RC filters like this is not such a good idea because it generates in these filter types very high attenuation and it shifts the color frequency into lower frequency ranges. And the reason for that is that the second RC stage in this case is loading the first RC E stage. You could get away if you only have two stages like this. Uh, if you choose a low impedance uh, solution here on the first stage and a high impedance solution on the second stage, you're in kilo ohms here and uh, you move up into the mega ohms, but mega ohm and picofarads. And then if you would add a, a third order, this is a second order filter. If you add another RC, then you have a third order filter and uh, you would have to get even higher up in impedance and that's not possible and not practically doable and so you end up with high attenuation and a uh, shifted uh, cutoff frequency and you don't want to do that the way around this to eliminate these effects is to move from passive filter in an active filter and have a buffer in between between each stage here between the first and the second stage an operational amplifier as a buffer amplifier and have an, on the output a buffer amplifier. So you would have two amplifiers for two RCs and that's a lot of effort and overhead and some smart people came up with better ideas and they invented this cell and key topology, for instance, and cell and key topology, you see a picture here. That's also a second order filter, but only with one operational amplifier. You see here the filter R1 C1, R2, C2, so two uh, capacitors, so second order, and this filter has a attenuation again, again of one. You have a negative feedback from the output to the non-inverting input, and you have a positive feedback. And usually positive feedbacks are dangerous because things start to oscillate, and you have to do it right, and then you you are happy and you can control the filter to perform in the way that you really want to. Let's analyze this circuit a little bit. Let's look what's what's the cell and key topology do at very low frequency, DC. So at DC this one is open, C1 is open, C2 is open. And what you really have is R1 or 2 in series and a negative feedback. So all you have is a buffer amplifier. And at higher frequency, at very high frequencies, um, this is almost a short, that's almost a short. Uh, so that means that this, this um, non-inverting input is virtually on ground. And uh, so this is virtually on ground. The output is then also virtually on ground. So you have R1, C1 to ground and the R2, C2 to ground. And so what you have is exactly what you see up here two RC filters in series. And uh, so that's giving us uh, the 20 dB per, uh, the 40 dB per decade uh, roll off. So at low frequencies, you have uh, attenuation of one, uh, a gain of one, sorry, no attenuation, it's flat. And then at higher frequencies, you have this minus 40 dB uh, per decade roll off. But what's happening between? And it, what's happening between is defined by the relationship between C1 and C2. Because C1 and C2, and also R1 and R2, of course, is defining the Q of this um, 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 active filter. And if you choose C1 equals C2, you have a rather lazy roll off from uh, your passband to your stop band. If you choose, however, C1 very, very high, much higher than C2, you get a peaking at the, in the area of the roll-off. 
And so with this uh, choosing the right components, the right values for these um, resistors and capacitors, you can define the peaking. How steep is the peaking and how fast is the roll off? And by adding more and more of these filters, this is a second order. If you want to, if you need a, a fourth and a sixth order filter, for instance, you have in a sixth order filter, you have three of these stages. And by selecting the queue of each of these stages, maybe stage one has another queue, a higher queue than stage two, and the stage two then again a different queue than stage three. By selecting the right queues, you can design filter characteristics like Butterworth, Bessel and Chebby Jeff. And we looked at these characteristics in another video as well. So that's how you come up with different filter characteristics by playing around with these cues. So when we look at the most common used topologies for active filter, we already looked at cell and key. We already know this one from before. And then there is another one, another topology that is used uh, quite often. That's a multiple feedback topology you see here on the right side. Um, and um, while a silent key topology is a non-inverting amplifier, um, we use in the multiple feedback and inverting amplifier configuration. So there are some uh, pros and cons on each side. Of course, uh, obviously, is that cell and key has less components than multiple feedback, as long as you, of course, have a gain of one. If you don't have a gain of one, you have a, RC and a voltage divider with two resistors here on the output and feedback the divided voltage. And then, uh, of course, this uh, argument of less components is gone. Um, since this is a non-inverting uh, amplifier, the gain here is exactly one. This is a inverting amplifier, the multiple feedback. And so the gain is one plus one in this case. So it's two. So that means the noise, the noise generated from the input of the op amp and generated through the components here, um, this noise gain is uh, only one and the noise gain here is two. So for low noise applications, you would go rather for cell and key. Um, if you look closer at this silent key topology, then you would see that at higher Q, um, the output uh, impedance of the operational amplifier, you have to take into account. And um, because of this output impedance of the operational amplifier, you get at higher frequencies, uh, again, an increase on your output. So you have pass band in this case of a low pass band stop band you get this 40 db attenuation but at higher frequency it starts to crank up again and uh, that's very typical at, at silent key that at higher frequencies uh, you lose attenuation and that's not going to happen at the multi-feedback and so therefore uh, in bandpass applications and notch applications, you need high cues, and therefore often at bandpass and low and uh, notch applications, notch filters, you use multiple feedback rather than silent key uh, topology. So that's uh, in a nutshell the differences. And if you use um, um, tools like from Texas Instruments, we take a look at that later. Yeah, it will automatically select uh, the best possible topology for your application. So, uh, cell and key once more. Let's take a closer look at this queue because this is so uh, critical and important. You see a cell and key topology here again with this time um, again, or you could just with R, R A and R B, you could select uh, the gain you need. Sometimes we use uh, damping factors instead of Q, but the damping factor zeta is nothing else but one divided by two Q. And you often hear this um, definition of underdamped and overdamped and critical damped. So an undamped situation is the maximum Q you can get. If Q gets really, really high, then zeta becomes uh, close to zero. 
and so that means it's the system is not damped you have a very high peak at the area of your roll-off under damped means you are less than one so it's it's the opposite it's very very lazy a very lazy roll-off and uh, a critically damped is uh, set to exactly one that's here and over damped is more than one so that's uh, the situation here so a q of two means it peaks at approximately two times the amplitude of uh, the steady band, uh, uh, steady uh, pass band. I usually use this filter designer tool from Texas Instruments. It's very handy. It's free. It stores uh, away your designs, you and uh, of course they try to sell you their amplifiers. Why not? But uh, you can choose any amplifiers of your desire. Of course, it has to fit and match your application. That's that's sure. But it's really handy, it's really cool, it's nicely documented what you do here. So I designed an active filter with approximately the same specification than uh, what we had before with the two uh, RC stages in series. You see here a quad op amp for operational amplifier. I'm only using one stage, the low pass stage here. And uh, let's take a look at the the design page I used, I'm using uh, usually uh, this analog filter design tool from Texas Instruments. And choose a Jeffy Jeff second order. You can choose typically what kind of a filter type you want. You, you can choose uh, uh, what kind of uh, here the filter type, high, low pass, whatever, you can choose the response. I did select Chappy Chef second order. I did select 870 hertz again. And I accept the 1 dB ripple. That's the ripple here in the, in the pass band. If you look at, at here at low frequencies, you have uh, 0 dB um, magnitude. And then it raises, goes up all the way to, what is it, plus 1 dB approximately. Here we have 1 dB. And then it starts to roll off. And at 870 hertz, a Chebby Jeff designed by this tool um, sets off the roll off exactly at this frequency, not at minus 3 dB point. If you use a Bessel or a Butterworth, um, then you have this uh, standard uh, 3 dB point as uh, the cutoff frequency specification. But with uh, Chebby Jeff, you have 870 hertz. That's exactly spot on. That's here. 800, yeah, it's somewhere here. You see that's crossing 0 dB. So, and then you have your roll off. This is the topology of the cell and key filter. You see you have two RC um, stages, but only one operational amplifier. You can see, take a look again at the magnitude response, the phase response, how it turns 90 degrees and then it to 180 degrees. And then, of course, that's the design. And I had some troubles with these 390 nanohertz because I don't have it here at home. So I constructed it uh, with, what was it, 470 nanofarad in series with 2.2 uh, microfarad. Should give you around 390 nanofarads. On this active filter, you have yellow is the input. I power it with plus minus 5 volt and the green is the output. Let's take a look at the scope. We still sweep from 10 Hertz to 2 kilohertz in uh, 0.1 seconds. And you can see nicely here the, the gain that we have, the 1 dB gain in the passband. 
and then you can also see that it rolls off pretty pretty exactly here at the 40 milliseconds mark which corresponds to 870 hertz plus minus and then it, it steep sharply steep steep roll off of minus 40 db per decade now we sweep logarithmically the logarithmic scale and here you see the, the minus 40 db you see that it starts to increase a little bit here at the uh, attenuation you get some gain at higher frequencies this is very typical for cell and key operational amplifiers you see that uh, the output resistor of the operational amplifier uh, plays uh, a role at higher frequencies and results in uh, a gain at higher frequencies and you start seeing this here even uh, already at, at 2 kilohertz.